This instructional video is only to be used as a training aid. It is not intended as a replacement for the operating instructions or repair manuals. Operation should be performed only by properly trained personnel, following instructions in the Mueller operating manual. And remember, always use the appropriate safety equipment. Always wear eye protection. And always use genuine Mueller parts and materials. This video training module will show the recommended operation procedures for the Mueller CL-12 drilling machine. The CL-12 drilling machine is designed for water system applications and has a maximum working pressure of 250 PSI at 100 degrees Fahrenheit with a maximum temperature rating of 500 degrees Fahrenheit at 150 PSI. The machine has 25 inches of boring bar travel and can cut holes from 1 and 3 quarter inches through 12 inches in size. Each new CL-12 drilling machine comes with a crank handle, ratchet handle, ratchet handle extension, a screwdriver, three double open-ended wrenches, three Allen wrenches, eight 5 8 inch by 3 inch bolts and nuts, eight 11 16 inch D-type washers a machine adapter gasket, cutting grease, and a Mueller operating instructions manual, which should be read, reviewed, and followed during each operation. All of this equipment comes in a sturdy wooden carrying case. In addition to the standard equipment, there are certain optional items to be selected for use with the CL-12 drilling machine. The first is the shell cutter, selected according to the size of the tapping valve to be used. Note that all shell cutters for this machine are slightly smaller than their nominal size, which assures that they will clear the bore of the tapping valve. This applies to shell cutters with carbide tips, as well as those intended specifically for use on plastic pipe. The second optional item is a cutter hub. This will be determined by the size of the shell cutter. The third piece is a pilot drill. This piece is selected according to the size of the shell cutter and the type of pipe to be cut. And finally, an adapter, selected according to the size and type of tapping valve end to be used. The CL-12 drilling operation can be performed by hand using the ratchet handle and ratchet handle extension or by using the Mueller H614 air power operator or the Mueller H607 hydraulic power operator. Either power operator attaches directly to the machine without an adapter. Always remember to wear protective eyewear while performing any operation under pressure. The first step in the CL-12 drilling procedure is to install the tapping sleeve and valve to the pipe. This installation will need to be tested. To do that, Place the valve in the closed position and apply pressure through the test port on the tapping sleeve. When the valve and sleeve have been installed and pressure tested, the next step will be to bolt the machine adapter to the front of the machine using the gasket supplied with the machine. Tighten the bolts evenly and securely. Now, Turn the crank handle at the rear of the CL-12 machine in a clockwise direction, extending the boring bar. Then attach the cutter hub to the end of the boring bar. Thread the retaining bolt through the cutter hub. Now thread the lower nut and lock washer on. and tighten the retaining bolt. Next, tighten the Allen head screws until the backing ring is rigid. Take the shell cutter and thread it onto the hub. Check the teeth on the shell cutter to make sure they are sharp and in good condition 
before attaching the pilot drill to the cutter hub. Make sure the detents on the pilot drill are compressible and will spring back to their original position. Now thread the pilot drill into the hub. Place the O-ring on the front of the adapter, fitting it into the groove. Apply cutting grease to the tips of the cutting edges of the shell cutter and the pilot drill, and also on the O-ring in front of the adapter. Turn the crank handle counterclockwise to retract the boring bar to its rearmost position. Now, measure from the front flange of the adapter to the point of the pilot drill. Then, measure from the side of the pipe to the front flange of the tapping valve. Note both of these measurements. They will be needed later. Make sure that the tapping valve is in the fully open position and that it is firmly supported by blocking underneath. Now, bolt the machine and the adapter with the O-ring in place to the tapping valve's outlet flange. Since in this demonstration a power operator will be used, the machine will be mounted with the driving spindle pointing up. For manual operation, it would be mounted with the spindle to the side. Use appropriate blocking under the end of the machine so that the full weight of the machine is not supported by the tapping valve. There are two indicators on the CL12 machine. The automatic feed indicator pre-selects the depth of the cut, and the tool position indicator shows the position of the boring bar in relation to its rearmost position at all times. To determine the approximate distance required for the pilot drill to reach the main, Take the distance between the side of the pipe and the tapping valve flange, which for this demonstration was 15 and 1 half inches, and subtract the distance the pilot drill extends past the adapter flange, which was 2 and 3 quarter inches. The result is the approximate distance needed for the pilot drill to reach the side of the main, which for this demonstration is 12 and 3 quarters inches. Now, turn the crank handle clockwise and check the tool position indicator gauge, stopping when it reads this distance. The pilot drill should now be at the pipe. If the pilot drill contacts the pipe, it is necessary to retract the drill by reversing the crank two revolutions. The H614 air power operator will be used for this demonstration. Place the power operator on the shaft. Insert the pivot pin. Tighten the thumb screw. Attach the bolt and wing nut on the other side and tighten the wing nut in place. There are two knobs on the rear of the machine. This one engages and disengages the automatic feed mechanism. And this is the automatic feed knob which sets the feed mechanism to the required travel distance. Using the size of the pipe and the size of the shell cutter, Refer to the operating manual to determine the proper travel distance. Now, turn the automatic feed knob to set the feed mechanism to that distance. Pull out the two knobs on the rear of the CL12. Rotate the crank handle counterclockwise until it locks into position. Squeeze the handle of the power operator to make the cut. As the cut is being made, the position indicator will count up. This shows the forward distance the cutter has advanced into the cut. At the same time, the automatic feed indicator will count backwards until the cut is finished and the indicator reads zero. When zero is reached, the mechanism will automatically disengage the machine drive, stopping the forward motion of the shell cutter. When that occurs, turn off the power operator and remove it from the machine. Now that the cut has been made, turn the crank handle counterclockwise and back the cutter, pilot drill, hub, and boring bar to the rearmost position. Close the tapping valve. Unbolt the machine and its adapter. Remove the coupon from the shell cutter. Do not pry against the sides of the slot, which could damage the shell cutter. This concludes the training demonstration of the CL12 drilling machine. 
one of a series of training and instructional videos for Mueller Company. Thank you for your interest in Mueller Company and its products.